What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be working on the Mini Cooper once again. So in the last video, I showed you guys how to replace uh, the differential, I showed you how to replace bearings, how to replace the seals inside your Mini Cooper transmission. Now that that's complete, I need to get working on the car itself. So I have the motor ready, I've got the transmission ready, I just need to bolt those together and then put everything back inside the engine bay. But I can't put those back in the engine bay knowing that the transmission and the engine is gonna sit in an engine bay that looks like this. So you can see that the subframe is pretty rusty. All the insides of the engine bay is pretty dirty. So this definitely needs some loving. Right, Sush? Yeah. Uh, but I need to go ahead and tackle all of this. So you can see that there's a lot of rust in here, a lot of rust down here. Uh, the steering rack doesn't exactly look so good. I want to make it so that when I put the engine and everything inside of here, it's going to look fantastic. So I already did a little bit of homework and a little bit of researching as to how I'm going to go ahead and do this. So fingers crossed, everything is going to go well. I need to work inside the car for a little bit. I need to go underneath the car for most of it. And there's going to be some other things that I need to remove so that I can drop the subframe from the chassis. So let's get right into it. So now with these undercarriage bolts removed and those two pieces that basically cover the entire bottom side of the car, what we now need to do is remove all the things that are connecting the subframe up to the car. So right now we still have the steering system that's connected to it. We have all the wires that are going to the power steering. This all here is completely electric so we need to disconnect this. We need to disconnect the steering shaft that goes in here and in order to get access to that we need to go inside the car. Following that there's going to be a couple wires like right here that are connected to the frame. You've got another one right here. So we have a couple other things we need to remove first before we can drop the whole thing from the car. So what I'm first going to do is go inside the car and show you how to disconnect the steering. So right now the steering wheel, when you turn this, it directly relates and corresponds to the steering rack. So when you turn the steering wheel, you can see that it's turning that shaft down there. So on the bottom part of the steering column, you can see that there's a little bolt down directly in the center that we need to remove. So if you turn this, you can see that it's threaded all the way through to the other side. So we're gonna turn the steering so that that bolt is facing down. And then with an extension and a 13 millimeter socket, we're gonna have to go ahead and zap that off. Now we are going to need to realign this steering shaft after we install this back on the car. However, for the meantime, just take that bolt, set it aside, and just keep track as to where the steering wheel is in relation to the power steering rack. So if we move back to the engine bay, you guys are going to be able to see that the steering shaft inside the rack goes up and it connects with that metal part that's found inside the cabin. So inside of here is where we remove that bolt. So that means that the mechanical part that's connecting the rack and the column is no longer connected. So when we drop the subframe, it should come out really easily. There's going to be a couple connectors up here. You can see that this one here, this upper one, found here on the left. This is connected to the chassis along with this one right here. This one supplies power to it. This middle one here we do not need to remove because all that this does is it connects to this lower part of the steering rack. So this here is gonna come out with us along with this part. So the only ones that we need to remove is this one here and this one there. Following that is going to be the other electrical parts that we have that are connecting up to the subframe. So you can see that right here we have one, and I'm going to be using this panel popper, slide it underneath, and all you have to do is pry it up. And it pulls it out, and you can reuse this. Same thing goes for this connector right here. So you just slide it underneath, and you use a little bit of leverage to pry it out, just like that. Now the last electrical part that's going to be connected to the subframe is going to be found right here on the driver's side. So if your vehicle has HIDs with the auto leveling headlights, you're going to have this little sensor here that connects to the control arm, which is very difficult to get to, but it's right here. That there connects onto this, 
and then this will tell you basically the angle of the car. You're going to have another one of these found on the back side of the car and both of those will talk to the computer and it's going to let the car know at what angle the headlight should be pointing the light at. To remove this electrical connector from the connection, we need to push this top part down, this bottom part up, and then pull the entire connector towards you. Next up comes removing the subframe. So in total, there are 10 bolts that are securing the subframe up to the chassis, five of them found on each side. So if we were to just section off one side here and work on the passenger side, we're going to find three of them back here. We're going to find another one right there. And we have another one that's found on the top of here. So once we remove all of them, the subframe will be able to drop to the floor. So I'm going to strategically remove them so that I can do this all myself. So what I'm going to start off with doing is removing the one bolt found in the middle section. Then I'm going to remove two of them found on each side of the rear section. I'm then going to loosen the rear, completely remove the front, and then remove the rear. Now that's going to allow me to drop it down onto the jack stands that you're seeing at the front, and then I'll be able to remove it forwards. So here is the entire subframe assembly removed from the car. So we're going to be removing a couple other things from the setup so that we can get access to the subframe itself and start restoring this. So you can see that we have the big chunky part right here. This is part of the power steering rack. So we have the motor, we have the rack itself, goes to each end of the outer tie rod ends, one there and one there. Behind that, we have this, this is the sway bar. So we're going to be removing this and we're gonna be installing a larger, beefier one from Eibach and we're gonna replace that once the subframe has been restored. You can see in here we have one of the subframe bushings. So we're gonna be replacing this one here, the standard rubber bushing that is going to deteriorate and degrade over time with an upgraded one from Alta. Now I'm gonna get into that later. I also wanna see if I can replace the boots. I wanna recondition and refurbish the power steering rack. Um, and then other than that, it's pretty much just a matter of removing all the rust that we see here and bringing it back to life. Now one last thing before we actually get started with ripping this thing apart, if you guys place your jack directly in the center of the subframe, you'll be able to balance the entire thing and get this removed from the car with just one jack. You don't need anything else. So you can see that I'm pumping this right now. It's balanced and it works good. So I'm gonna actually set this thing down on the ground and I'm gonna start taking some of these things off of the subframe.
Guys, this subframe looks so much better than how it used to look. Now, I gotta say, it did take a little bit of work and a lot of time uh, to get this looking the way it is. So I spent at least four days prepping and actually painting the subframe on its own, let alone installing the other parts onto the subframe. Now, because it's kind of cold this time of year, um, the paint itself doesn't exactly want to dry that fast. Now, ideally, you'd want to do this when it's warm or when it's summer out, so you don't have to wait so long for each coat to dry. Because between every single coat, I had to basically wait 24 hours to lay the next coat on. On the instructions, it says that it should be dry to the touch between two and six hours, but that is very dependent on the temperature. If you guys can wait and you can do this project or you can tackle this kind of rust once it's warm outside, you're not gonna be waiting that long to reinstall everything back on the car. But now that it is completely done, you can see how fantastic this all looks. So the whole subframe is redone. We have new sway bars on there. I am going to need new end links or new tie rod ends right here. The end links for the sway bars, those are all coming in. I have new control arms and everything looks absolutely incredible. Now, I wouldn't have been able to do this without getting some parts from ECS. Um, that's where I purchased almost all of my parts for this Mini. Now, if you guys have a German car, that is probably my go-to website for you guys. Now, right now, up until the 15th of February, which is the day after Valentine's Day, next Friday, if you guys go on their website, you'll be able to find massive discounts on all of their assembled by ECS kits. So the kit that I used to replace the boots in here and a whole bunch of other kits that I got for the Mini, you guys can find all that stuff on their website and it's on sale. How sick is that? 
Um, anyways, guys, if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any further questions regarding anything I did, comment sections down there along with the description box of the video. I'll be putting some more information down there. So if you want to find any of the safety things, the tools, the products, any of it, it's all down there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll be working on the Mini really soon. I need to clean up the engine bay. I have more parts going in here. It all takes time, but I need to edit this, put this out, and then I'll be working on this thing next. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.